Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am finally filming my Asian Readathon TBR. Asian Readathon is, if you don't know, a month-long readathon running in May and it started in 2019, so this will be the third year. I am very, very excited to read only Asian book, almost, for the whole month and I'm gonna go through all the different books I'm gonna read now obviously, because that's why we're here, and I'm very excited. Asian Readathon is, if you don't know, hosted by the wonderful with Cindy, and I, of course, leave the announcement video down below, as well as the Google Doc with all the information, and the Twitter, and other information that I can remember that is important if you want to check out more info about the Readathon. But basically, the focus of the Readathon is, obviously, to read Asian books. So basically, books written with Asian protagonists, or Asian stories, Asian narratives by Asian authors, etc. And I am, as always, very excited because I'm Asian, but also just excited. <laughs> Obviously, I try to read Asian books outside Asian Readathon, but this is just full focus on the Asian-ness. Is that even a word? Asian-ness? Whatever. <laughs> there is five reading challenges for the Readathon itself, but I will keep reading only Asian books outside those challenges. For those five challenges, as you pick book for them, you can double up on the challenges, for, but for every book you pick, it should be an author with a different Asian ethnicity. And I did do that, but like for the rest of my TBR, there is ethnicities repeating itself, to say it like that. But for those five, I did do a different one for each one and had that in mind when picking my books. There's also another focus I did here was to pick books I already own. I have a lot of Asian books on my TBR already. I try to avoid buying new books, even though there is some other way already, so are new, that I will mention here. But there's like so many more I would want to read and I wish, for example, that I had a bit more variation in genres, but then I would have to buy books. I wouldn't have to. I mean, I could have found them, for example, in my library, but like I wanted to focus on the ones I already own and not like focus on like buying new things, just like diversify, I guess, my genres at least, and also maybe the author's ethnicities, because I do feel like I have many of the same ones here. But but that can be for another time and there's also future future reading days. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that because it was things I thought about when picking my books. I talked way too long. Let's talk about the challenges. The first challenge is to read any book by an Asian author. For this, I am finally reading A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This one is talked a lot about and it's very sad. I assume someone die, and it's just about this friendship group and the author is of Japanese descent, if I'm correct, and was born and lived on Hawaii, if I am again correct. Yeah, I just heard many amazing things about this for like ages, a billion years. Everyone has read it, cries and think it's beautiful and I had it for a billion years on my shelves. So I thought that like, let's go. It's a bit thick, 700 pages or something, but my reading is very good lately. So I don't think it will be a problem. Where to put books I already talked about. There's literally like 14 piles of books in my room. Help me. I'm gonna move some pillows. <laughs> oh my God. Do not make the books fall. There, okay. The next challenge is to read a book with an Asian protagonist. And for this, I chose Our Way of Fate by Gloria Chow, who is a Taiwanese author. And I read the first book by this author called American Panda, who also had a Taiwanese main character. And it was just so cute and adorable and just really, really good. And I really enjoyed it. And of course, I wanted to read all of the books from the same author. She also had another one out with a fake dating trope, but I yeah, like bought them in like the order of what to call publication. So that's why I'm reading this first. I don't know what this is, book is about. I just know the main character is Asian and it's by Gloria Chow and that's all I needed to know. I will tell you more eventually in my wrap up. So yeah, that's how usually I roll with books I am already interested in. The next challenge was to read a book in your favorite genre or release or having to be Asian. And I of course chose fantasy because that is my favorite genre if you didn't know. So I am reading The Wolf of Oren Yarrow by K.S. Viliso and this author is Filipino and I don't know what is this about. I just know that people really like it. The series itself is called like the Bitch Queen series and like the first sentence behind here is that it's, they called me the Bitch Queen, the she-wolf because I murdered a man and I'm a king the night before they crowned me. So it just sound like a really, I would say, intense main character and I'm very excited to read it. This I was going to read this month anyway but like now I in inserted it in like the challenges so, like I will for sure 100% read it I am very excited I think it will be fun I wish I had like the sequel what if I really like it and want to read it once but if I had it I probably wouldn't at once because I'm really slow at picking up sequels. I'm sorry. The next challenge was to read a non-fiction Asian book. And for this one, I chose Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I actually picked this because in Cindy's announcement video, she talked about this and said that she really, really liked it. And I am gonna read this on audiobook because the author herself read it. I know that the book follows 
Chanel story being one of the rape victims from this really big case in America on the campus it was happening if I remember correctly and then like we didn't know who it was at the time and then later she came out that this it was her and then she talks about like what happened the experiences and stuff and people said this is really 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 good I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it and I hope that I really really like it I think the audio will be really good since it's read by the author I usually really like non-fiction where the author reads the story themselves because then it feels so more closer to home I guess and I'm just really excited to pick this up so this will be my audiobook or like one of them for this month and uh, yay and the last challenge for Asian Readathon itself is to read a book that is not US centric and for this one I chose The Silence of Bones by June Her. This one is set in Korea and it's also a historical fiction mystery crime novel thing so it is set in the 1800 in Yuseon, which I can't pronounce, but it's like a dynasty that lasted in Korea. And then like there's a murder happening and it seems like I'm gonna investigate and I I'm very, very excited to read this. I heard amazing things. I've been wanting to read it for ages, finally picking it up and I think it fits really well. And obviously the author here is Korean, so yeah, just very excited. So that was my fine box for like the main reading challenges for May and I of course will read all those. Then of course I have my God of Fame for season reading challenge. I made that Asian on purpose and I already picked out the books for that but I will of course repeat them here in case you haven't watched my God of Fame for Spring reading challenge. The first book I will be reading for God of Fame for season is Dan Utsumaki by Junji Ito. This one is like a horror manga. I thought that this was actually like a novel not a manga so I thought it was just like a really long book like I don't remember 600 page long book but I bought it anyway because I was ready to read that book it was manga I showed up and I was like oh it's a manga and it has very interesting art people say it's really creepy like it's known to be like a really big horror manga author and I'm just very excited for it so yeah yeah I have my copy now I'm ready to dive in but then also I realized that this would take me much shorter time than if it was actually a 600 page length novel it's only a manga we read it in like one day so then I'm like whoa I have time for more reading but yeah then I will be reading when the tiger came down from the mountain which is a sequel to Empress of Salt and Fortune by Neva this one is also a short novella like a tour novella so it also will not take me a long time how about this it has never I bet it will arrive tomorrow after I'm filming this, but I had to film this today, so life. Then I am reading Jade War, which is the sequel to Jade City. I am also reading Jade City, but this is not like for God of Fame for Season. This is just me rereading it because I want to read Jade War, but I want to reread this on audiobook. So this is my other audiobook beside Know My Name. And then I will read Jade War for God of Fame for Season. So I'll be reading both these again. This is one of my favorite books of all time, so excited to reread this. I've actually been like in the middle of it since November, but I've never like completed like it. I started audio, but I haven't completed it. And I also have already ordered Jade War, I just haven't arrived yet. So as I said, I did buy some books for this, but this was like for the challenge to go to the season, and then I fit out like the rest of the stuff. <laughs> the last thing we're going to think for season will be Love Hina by Ken Akamatsu. This is like the omnibus version. So I think it's the three first volume of like the manga. Yeah, it contains one, two, three of Lamhina because it's like a longer manga series. And this challenge was actually for God of Fame for Season was to read a, a manga that has a manga graphic novel, whatever it was, that has been developed into a adaption and like Love Hidna has a anime I haven't watched it and I actually wished for this for my birthday years ago it's like one of the mangas I think I own the longest but I haven't read it yet and I was planning to like just pick like the other mangas I have like in rotation as I read as the year goes along like I've been reading all year for this challenge but then I realized as I had this for ages I should read it for this challenge because then I like will actually read it since I had it for ages but more like then I won't really like just a manga that I normally read in rotation so it would be like a bit different since like it's for the challenge and not just a manga I read between every second book if you know what I mean so yeah I chose to finally pick this up it's been probably on my TBR for over 10 years so it is time and I'm excited and then I will finally maybe read the rest of the series so yay so that is all my reading challenge books we are now at 10 books so 
We will go a bit further, of course. I also need to read The Never Tinting World by Winter Peckle. This is the book club pick of the month for Facing Gaze, which is the book club I am co-hosting, where we read queer, sci-fi or fantasy every single month. For May, we read The Never Tinting World by Winter Peckle, who writes amazing books. I like how I enjoyed all of their work that I have read, and I read quite a few of them now. I'm so excited to read this book. I don't know at all what it's about. <laughs> It says two sisters broke the world, two sisters will save it. That's all I need to know. I am beyond excited and I don't know, I just think it will be so fun. And it looks really easy to read, white fantasy, let's go. So yay, if you want more information about the book club, it's linked down below. Now, that is like all books I have to read. I literally piled out so many books that I could pick for the rest of the month. But I guess I know I will probably read more than this, unless like I fail horribly. So many of these are like really easy reads, so I know I would need more books. I have ordered The Force of Stolen Girls, also by June Her, which is her newest release, and I'm so so excited for this. It's like a sister story. I pre ordered it. It's on its way and should be here now. This will be like I think my first read after all my obligatory reads. I will read this one. We also have the ones we are meant to find by Joan He, which is the author of Descendant of the Crane, which I also read. I like that one, but it wasn't exactly for me, but I think this one looks like very atmospheric and nice and like another... Is this also a sister story? I'm questioning my life. I don't think The Force of Story Girls is a sister story. I think it's this this one. I'm mixing them up. Or the pre-order this one. And it's released on the 4th of May. So I know I will get it in the month of May. So I will get to this. But like it would definitely arrive later than like other books. So like if it arrives too late then I might not be able to get it. But I'm very excited for this. And it's definitely high on my TBR. I also ordered Blackwater Sister by San Cho. This is another new release coming I think the 14th of May. There's a chance that this won't arrive in May. Because post is taking ages this time but I'm very excited for this too and I want to read it if it arrives in time but if I'm like in the middle of other things I might not get to it but I hopefully I will so I said I don't want to buy books because I already ordered these ones because these were like my most anticipated releases and I would rather bought those and like to fit other random things for challenges I guess not that I wouldn't want to read those either I don't know how to describe things. There's also so many good Asian books coming like exactly like the first of June or like the end of May and like there's like four titles I especially have my eyes on, or three. Three? I can't count. Three or four or something. And I know I want those, but they will become too late for Asian Readathon. But of course, I will buy them and read them later anyway. But those, if I, they were earlier, I will read them here. In between every second book, however many we have, not counting audiobooks, I read manga and these are the ones that I have right now. We have Bingo Straight Oaks Volume 10, finally starting up the series again because I completed another one. Very, very excited to continue this because it's one of my faves. Whoop. I don't bother saying what this is about, I'm sorry, My Hero Academia, volume 27, so we are far in and I just got this and I will read it definitely in May. I know I will get to at least all of these I'm holding right now. More manga is as always on its way. Maybe that's why I don't have four to buy other books, because I buy so much manga. We have Promise Neverland volume 15 and I have bought volume 16, so like if I need more after all these, I read them and know where I get them, then I have it. And uh, yeah, I'm really close at the end, I'm screaming. Then somehow I got the first volume of Jujutsu Kaisen. If you know and you've been trying to get this one, it's been really really hard because it's been sold out for ages because, well, manga like in the first start of a, like all series has been sold out. I think it's because of Covid because there are production problems and shipping problems etc. But this came in stock in like one day. I bought it on once as it came in because I had like a notification on it and then it was sold out later that day. So it's been insane how people want it. I watched like two episodes of the anime and I liked it and now I just I need to read the manga. So here we are. And then we have Demon's Like 105 continuing with this and um, I'm excited because I want to catch up and stuff. Yay! So then also I realized I have this graphic novel, The Complete Persepolis by Marjana Satrapi. I know, I'm sorry. And I had this for ages and I want to read it, but I will prioritize kind of my manga because I had this for ages. I want to read it, but yeah, I will read this in between things if I don't have enough manga, for example. But yeah, it's not a priority, but I want to show it here. You thought this was over? I'm pretty sure I will just show you my top priority ones and then just stack the rest. My top one, if I finish all those I just talked about, then my first one would be These Violet Delights by Chloe Gong. I wanted to read it since it came out like in November. And here we are. So this will be like top in the top when I finished all the other ones. <laughs> and I know it's a Juliet and Romeo retelling set in Shanghai and I cannot wait. It is Shanghai, right? 
Yes, and also in 1926, it's also historical fiction. What is going on? Then I would love to read Smoke in the Sun by Renee Alia, which is the sequel to Flame in a Mist. And this one is a priority because it's on my list of like books I want to finish this year. So I want to prioritize it for that reason. So I actually have finished something on that list. And it is a duology. So if I finish this, I finish that series. I really like the first one. It's set in like in a Japan inspired world. And I want to finish it. So that's it. And I finally have it. So this will be after these wild lines. <laughs> finish all the other ones. I think I will. I think this is much easier than I think it will be since there's so many short things here. I would also love to read Red Tigress by uh, Amelia Van Chao. This is the sequel to Blood Air and I actually read Blood Air last year for Asian Vodathon. So it will be exactly one year later. This one is also a priority because it was a new release and I would want to like just read it so that I'm caught up with the series etc. I think it's gonna be a third book isn't it? I don't even remember. But yay! So now I'm gonna just show you the rest of the options I have but I don't know which one I will actually pick. I think these two next would be priority after those but I'm not sure if I will actually get to them. We have Soul of the Sword by Julie Kagawa then I would have read the second book in the series and can then read the third one which I don't own yet but will. I can finish that series. We have Ruse which is the sequel to Want and this is my only sci-fi thing here in the pile unless something is sci-fi without me knowing. And then I will finish this duology and it also like I just want maybe to change it up a bit since there's a lot of fantasy here. <laughs> this is such an intense TBR. This is more books that are Asian on my TBR. Also all these would be options after I finish all those I will just show you. I think I might get to some of these but I will not get to all of them. It's just I know how lots of options after what my mood fits. I even have more than this. I like have more at least one more Murakami and loads of more Marie Lu and these two here. So like if I somehow read all of this, it won't happen, but if I did, I would be able to like have more Asian books. I won't run out of Asian books. And these are like options. I think I would want to like after those maybe read Murakami because I really want to continue with those. And then like maybe one of these because I know they're contemporary and have a lot of fantasy here. But then I would see after that. I don't know what I would get to, but this is like all my options, they're very heavy. So uh, yeah, pause it if you want to look at them more thoroughly. My main focus this is of course in reading Asian books, but I have to, I was gonna say sadly, read some white books because I am, I was gonna say co-hosting, I am buddy reading all of Shadowhunter Chronicles with my friends and I don't want to stop that a whole month just because I have to read Asian books. I will always read my Asian book every day, but this will just be my added reading to every day because I only read like two chapters of this. And we are now on City of Glass and Clockwork Angel. We read City of Bones and City of Ashes in April and we're going to read two books every month. So we're reading in publication order, that's why we're starting on the different advices and not like just continuing with Mortal Instruments. But yeah, I think we'll be reading these two, but I only read, as I said, just like two chapters every day. So I will like main reading in my Asian book, whatever that is up for that day. And then add these, reading for these every day as well. But yeah, some workbooks had to be included. <laughs> Even though like you have my name Spain who's like a one Asian character, but yeah. Oh, and he's in this too, so it's perfect. The Jam is Asian, as we know also, so there's that. But yeah, I'm excited to see my reactions from my fans for this, because it's hilarious. There you have it. There is a lot of Asian books in this. I wish I had some adult crime. This is the one author I want to read more of. And like actually some like uh, adult romance, because there's like a sequel I really want to read. I wish I had those two because then I would be even have a more wide range of genre, maybe more non-fiction I guess. Just me reflecting upon my reading and stuff. But it's very doable I think, very chill, like except a big pile and stuff. And I'm not sure about like which order, but like you know my priority, you will see in my wrap up. I'm just in generally just really glad about my picks and I'm excited. So yeah, yay for only Asian reading for one month. But yeah, I think that's it. Are you participating in Asian Readathon? What are you reading? And thank you so much for watching this. You will see me soon in a new video and I hope you have a good month of May because also it's my birthday month. So it's clearly the best month. Asian Readathon and birthday in one month. What is life? So since it is my birthday month, you can leave the birthday celebration emoji down below if you like this, because why not? You see me soon in a new video. Goodbye.